We begin with a question. When you were a kid, did you know what you really wanted to do when you grew up? Tonight, we introduce you to a young man who seems to have been sure of his path. 207's Don Kerrigan is here <laughs> with the story. Hey, Don. Yeah, I'm not sure if I know yet what I want to do <laughs> when I grow up. But, you know, we hear an awful lot today uh, about young people not wanting to work or at least uh, not willing to take jobs where they work with their hands. So to all of you who shake your heads about young people today, here's a guy you ought to admire. He could be doing just about anything for work, but he has chosen to create a business and a life working in a garage. Dave has a real project on his hands. That is actually a shock absorber. This goes to a 1961 uh, MGA. And we're bringing this car. This is a complete ground up restoration. Tom has his own, an old Volvo sports car. So from about here down, the whole rocker panel, all the way back into here in the rear quarter, about up to here, into the floor was completely re redone. So this is what's selecting your gears. While and Philip has his hands full of transmission. You know, we want this car to be like new, and so it's going to shift like new when we're done with it. Welcome to Mechanical Arts, a small shop on a side road in Tenants Harbor that's been getting a lot of attention from people who love old cars. As long as I can remember, I've kind of gravitated towards anything in general that was old. And that's how Phil, who's just 26, explains it. Oh, there we go. That applied to books and music and cars. Philip Reinhardt started this business just three years ago. Now Dave and Tom are working for him and all three have plenty to do. And you guys are always busy. We can't keep up with it. So for small projects, we're booking probably in June and July, but for larger projects, we're already scheduling next winter. Some take longer than others, the red Volvo has been here about three months. It's been time consuming. Yeah, I mean, there's ups and downs. Obviously, it's, it's not too bad. I, I enjoy doing it. And they say the 61 MGA. The car is, uh, came, came to us in pieces. Has been here a lot longer. Pretty uh, experienced with how most things go together. But if you haven't done three or four of these, you may not know where every single part goes. They finished rebuilding the body of the car. It's in the next room waiting for the paint shop, right beside Philip's first car, a 1926 Ford Model T. So I was 15, if I remember right, the humble farmer, the radio personality relative of mine. He um, had always wanted to give me one of his Model Ts that he had driven in high school. And uh, for a long time, um, my parents you know, didn't want that around the house. But they relented, and Phil went right to work on it, because he had already been around old cars for years as a young volunteer at the Owl's Head Transportation Museum. I think I remember Phil when he might have been 14. That's where he met Warren Kincaid, a Model T expert who became a close friend. Philip is one of those rare individuals that has a knack for anything he wants to do. You know, without the old guys that I volunteered with at the museum, I don't know where I'd be. They were incredible. Not, and not just knowledge on cars, but just, you know, life lessons. Those lessons took hold. Philip discovered there was a school, McPherson College in Kansas, that taught antique car restoration. And I wasn't exactly considering college at that time, but then I saw that and I said, you know, that's exactly what I want to do. He had to persuade his parents and convince Warren. In fact, I, I encouraged him at times to become a lawyer instead of playing with mechanical things. I said, do the mechanical things as a hobby, you know, but he wouldn't listen to me. Philip graduated from the four-year program, worked out of state for a year, then came home and started Mechanical Arts, the business name inspired by work at the museum. Because this, you know, is a prime example of mechanical art, 1914 Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost. And once he opened the doors to the new business, Phil Reinhardt was off and running. I had three projects lined up when I opened, and pretty much within a few months, I had a wait list, and we haven't worked through it since. I got about 30 cars on a wait list. 
But still time for a second job as a boat captain. Phil got licensed while working on the Monhegan boat lines during school. Now he's one of the captains for the Penobscot Bay pilot boats. And all of that work means Phil's own cars don't get worked on much. They also get crowded by customer cars. We have to have six or seven projects going on at once because at any given time we're waiting on parts for three or four of them. And when one's done and rolls out, the owner takes it. Does that feel pretty good? Yeah, um, and, and especially, you know, when they have a nice reaction, like, wow, you know, I, this is better, you know, a lot of times they'll be saying, you know, it hasn't run this good in 20 years, and so that's a, that's a good feeling. Phil Reinhardt began turning wrenches when he was only nine years of age, tutored by museum masters, taking what Warren calls those rusty parts. So when we do a full restoration, that means we're making the car hopefully as good as new. To love the old things as much as he does. Now, Phil's going to do something rare this summer. He's going to take a break maybe a week and a half to two weeks to be part of a two-man team driving a 1931 Rio race car, an open car, this one, in what's called the Great Race. This year it's a 2,000-mile race, really a rally as well, go from Florida to Colorado, uh, and that car is owned by John Harris, the Model T aficionado with whom we did a story on 207 back in the fall. Uh, 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 Phil's going to sign on as the navigator because it's a rally, you have to do that. But I suspect they may value his mechanical skills as well on that trip. <laughs> yes. Yeah, when that car hits the Rockies, you never know what might happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and driving 2,000 miles, no roof, so yeah. if it rains, you gotta, you gotta cover up somehow. Yeah. Bring your goggles. Yeah, he's gonna have fun. Thank you, Don.